Good morning, hi, and welcome back to another episode of Kids Church Online with me, Marcus. I hope you guys are doing really well out there and that you've had a good week. And this morning, we're going to be taking a look at the topic of self-esteem. And self-esteem means believing in yourself and knowing that you are special and valuable. We're going to be finding out what the Bible has to tell us, and we're also going to be looking at some of the other messages that we might hear in our culture. And to do this, we're going to be examining and taking a close look at some of the words of a recent song that you might know really well. But before we dive more deeply into that, let's have a look at what's coming up in the rest of our session this morning. We've got worship, we've got our teaching time, and finding out what the Bible has to tell us about this topic and how to put it into practice in our lives. We've got a craft for you guys to do at home. We've got a memory verse, we've got some videos to watch, and lots more besides. So what are we waiting for? Let's get ready to worship.
to have a good self-esteem means is to kind of like boost yourself when you're not feeling good or you're, you just don't want to do anything. They're smart and they have con confidence in themselves and they do it and they get it right, but they're not a jerk to everybody else around them. Uh, happy. Definition of having a self-esteem is that you believe in yourself when no one else does. I like my hair and I like going cross -eyed. I like that I'm me. I like that my hair's brown. I like my eyes. Being confident is basically you believe in yourself and you try your best and you're like, I can do this, I can do this. I am funny and I'm very athletic. When somebody's, somebody's self-esteem gets hurt, it goes down like, Oh dang, I don't like myself because this person says this. If one of my friends were feeling sad, I would go play with her. I can help others when they need it, and I'm a friendly person. <laughs> Think you can't do something, just say, I can do it and you can do it. Be yourself. You know you're perfect the way you are. I have one chance to do this, and I'm not just gonna wake Waste it on being down on myself. I imagine that many of you guys have probably seen the film The Greatest Showman. Maybe you watched it together as a family. And the song that goes with the film, you probably well know, is called This Is Me. I'm now going to read out some of the words from that song, so you guys who've seen the film can be reminded about it, and those of you who haven't will get a feel for what the film's all about. Here we go. When the sharpest words gonna cut me down, I'm gonna send a flood, I'm gonna drown them out. I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be, this is me. I won't let them break me down to dust. I know that there's a place for us, for we are glorious. Now don't those words seem to give us a positive message about believing in ourselves and not letting other people tell us that we're no good? Well, think about this for a second. In 2016, Childline celebrated their 30th birthday, and Childline was set up as a phone number for children to call who were having problems who felt that they didn't have anyone else to talk to. Well, that same year, Childline received over 35,000 calls from children. Children who felt so bad about how they felt about themselves that they felt they needed to call Childline to have somebody to talk to who would listen to them, somebody who would care, and someone who would try and help them with their problems. In 2013, Katy Perry brought out her song Raw, and 2018, a few years later, Lady Gaga gave us her song Born This Way. And both of those songs seem to give the same messages about how we can be people who believe in ourselves more and know that we are special and valuable. I think many of us probably think when we first hear those kind of songs that those words are going to help us to feel better about ourselves. I mean there's lots of mentions in those songs about being strong and not caring about what other people think of us if they don't like us. But the only problem with these songs is that they don't actually seem to fix the problem of us or other people not feeling so great about themselves. And in fact, in 2018, when Lady Gaga brought out that song, Born This Way, children and young people's lack of self-esteem actually went up by 10%. So clearly the ideas and the messages and the words that are in these songs that are meant to help us aren't really working out so well for our children and young people. They're not actually solving the problem. And these songs tell us that the answer to not feeling so great about ourselves is simply to believe in ourselves more and to think positive, happy, good thoughts about ourselves. And if people don't like us or accept us 100% for who we are, all we need to do is stop being friends with them, cut them out of our lives and find a new group to hang out with. And then I look at some of the most well-known people in the Bible, people who were super close to God, people who I really admire and would love to be more like. I think of Moses, who got called by God to lead God's people out of slavery in Egypt. I think of John the Baptist, the person who God chose 
to get his people ready for Jesus' arrival. I think of Mary who God chose to be Jesus' mum on earth and who would give birth to him and raise him as her son. And then I think, how did these guys not let the hard or difficult times stop them from doing what they knew that God had asked them to do? How on earth did they get the confidence and self-esteem to carry on and do everything that God asked them to do? And Moses had a massive crisis of confidence when God told him to go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let God's people go from being slaves in Egypt. And God didn't suddenly turn up and say to Moses, Moses, you're perfect just the way you are, so stop worrying about what other people think. You've got this. Or John the Baptist, when more people started following after Jesus than him, he didn't get all huffy, insecure and jealous. No, instead he said, Jesus must become more important and I must become less important. And then of course there's Mary. And I just don't see from what the Bible tells us that after Angel Gabriel told her that she was going to be Jesus' mum, that she went around telling herself how brilliant she was or how fantastically gifted she was. And of course it was high time for God to give her a job like this to do. Guys, I've got to be honest. I just don't see the message of this is me. I'm perfect just the way I am being the way that these characters chose to find the strength and the confidence to keep going with what God had asked them to do when things got really hard. I believe that each of those characters had three truths that helped them to keep going when things got tough. Truth number one, I believe they held on to. God is awesome and holy and he loves me completely. Truth number two that they held on to. God is shaping me every day to become more like him and he's not finished with me yet. Truth number three, I believe that they held on to. I am invited to be a small part of God's wonderful plans for this world. See, I believe, guys, that the answer to helping our children and our young people and, in fact, our adults out of the crisis of lack of self-confidence and lack of self-belief, lack of self-worth and value isn't more of you. Actually, it's more of God. You see, guys, because right in the middle of us not always feeling fantastic about ourselves and not feeling that we're perfect, God is shaping each of us to accept and believe that we're completely loved by him, no matter what. And to understand that we are all imperfect people that he is working on and shaping day by day by day to become more like Jesus. And finally, for us all to know that just as we are right here, right now, we can be powerful for God and do incredible things by teaming up with him just like those guys did in the Bible. So let's pray. God, we thank you for those people in the Bible who found a better way to keep being confident and keep knowing that they were loved, even in the middle of difficult times, because they held on to you, knowing that they were loved just as they were, knowing that they were being shaped and changed to become more like you, and knowing that you wanted to use them to do amazing things, even with all their imperfections. Help us to be like them in the days and weeks to come. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. For today's craft activity, we are looking at some of the promises that God has made to each one of us in the Bible. You're gonna to need to print off the sheet from the Facebook page and then color in or decorate each picture as you'd like. You could take one of these promises for the whole week for your family, or you could take one a day and then practice speaking them over yourselves as you start the day. For example, on Monday, tomorrow you could say, 
God has good plans for me. God has good plans for our family. And then remind yourself of that promise from the Bible throughout the day or throughout the week. You could do it however you'd like, but the point really of this craft is to get God's truth into our minds and into our hearts. You could even cut out each of the promises and stick them in different parts of your house so that every time you go into that particular room, whether it's the bathroom, the kitchen or your bedroom, you remind yourself, that's what God says about me and I'm going to believe it in my head and in my heart too. And sooner or later, you're going to see the difference that believing God's truth makes to each one of you. So go have some fun and get really creative and let's enjoy seeing what God does as we get more of his truth into our minds and into our hearts. Never reverse, never reverse, never reverse, Chavish! Never reverse, never reverse, never reverse, Chavish! Ah oh, yes, yeah, a memory verse challenge, woo woo! Our memory verse this morning comes from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 9. And in it, Paul, the writer, is talking to God and asking him to take away a problem that he's got that he'd really rather not have. And this is what Jesus said to Paul. And he says the same thing to each one of us. My kindness is all you need. My power is strongest when you are weak. My kindness is all you need. My power is strongest when you are weak. Things to know before you go. I've got a very exciting announcement this morning. Woo -woo. I'm delighted to let you guys know out there that we're going to be starting back in person with Kids Church at St John's on Sunday, June the 27th. I can't wait to see you all and be with you again in person rather than through the computer. So tell your friends, get excited and get ready to come back to Kids Church when we meet for the first time on Sunday, June the 27th. Well, that's the end of our session this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope it's helped you, you've had fun, and you're going away with lots to think about and start doing. Until next Sunday, at the same time, may God bless you and protect you. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you really soon. Goodbye.